reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you'll be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judah, Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. Paul gets new glasses. I remember when I first got glasses, I think I was in high school by then. Prior to that, I still wasn't seeing the board that clearly, but I was a reasonably good student, so I could play it off as if I didn't need them. But that caught up with me in high school. And I remember once I got the glasses and putting them on, I was like, wow, everything looks so clear. Everything looks brand new. How was I making it before? I see a whole new world. Paul has a much, much more dramatic conversion than that. It was a conversion for me of sorts. Paul gets a complete orientation, if not a distant disorientation or a reorientation, that he's able to see differently than before. This road to Damascus changes everything. It's a wonderful call story, a conversion story. The one who was persecuting the church becomes an the one who was introduced in, I believe, chapter 7, where he was standing at the coats and cloaks of those who had laid before him while Stephen the martyr was getting killed. Paul approved of that. And now he has a moment, an experience that changes his life. This story is very popular in Acts of the 
puzzle. Luke really seems to enjoy this story, for it's repeated two more times in the Acts of the Apostles. It's a central narrative, and many people claim this Damascus-type experience when they too have had a radical orientation. I have not had such a conversion experience as that, but I really appreciate and respect those who do. But this is not the only conversion story, is it? We meet a disciple in this uh, pericope, Ananias, and he too has a conversion story, and he too needs new glasses, it seems. He had heard about Paul. He was like, Lord, isn't this the one who was after us? Isn't he the one who was doing evil? And the Lord was like, yes, but I've changed him, and I want you to lay your hands upon him. And immediately Ananias has changed too and has to see Paul in a different way. His conversion is not as dramatic as Paul's, but he's changed nevertheless. And I think his story is the one I want to concentrate on. His is a little bit more accessible to more of us, I believe. Have we all met someone who was a particular way and we kind of leave them in that way? They're forever that person that we don't want to be bothered and suddenly we get new glasses and we see them differently because there's a change there. I think that's a wonderful call for us. The great theologian John Calvin said the scripture can be spectacles or eyeglasses to help us see the world, to see others differently. I think God is inviting us perhaps to see the world in a different way. What type of glasses, what type of experiences do we need to see others and to be able to pray for them, pray for their conversion to be complete and lead them to Christ, lead them on the way. I pray that we all has a, have a heart to touch lives and change hearts and see things in a different way so that we all can come into a deeper understanding of the world around us, not fix people in one box and see them forever and ever in the old way, but to see them in a new way. I think our church could use such